girl, you better embrace that black. House niggas get back. Uh, brown melanin, beyond intelligent, original, original. Bro, a lot of good stuff in store, man. You got like a work with a number of different people, got a number of uh, music projects and collaborations with Project Pad, Freeway, Crooked Eye from Slaughterhouse, you know, your your, your boy uh, T-Dub-O, y'all done done a number of projects together, Tef Poe, man. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just great to have you, uh, you know, here today, man, in the studio with us, man. Uh, I like to, like, start from the beginning and then, like, work our way up if Go that's ahead, cool man, yeah <laughs> yeah it's your show so, <laughs> so uh man um boy question i did want to ask you though man when you first meet people do they think you're from st louis nope why, <laughs> why, why do you think that is <laughs> probably because of the hair or like the clothes they they every everybody always think i'm from like the west coast Man, they, man, they, they, I, they I could've, I could, I could have guessed that, man. It's for some reason. It, it don't matter, like if they from St. Louis or not. You know what I mean? Like, like you, you know, like the stick was the the look that most like the common STL dude words yeah. like the true religion <laughs> or the stack jeans, uh, the blue, you know, the the man purse, the ski mask, <laughs> stuff like that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. it it be real stylish, but that's 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 like the St. Louis, you you know what I'm saying? Like you know, uh, drip. I guess, I, I guess, man. But I just I just needed to ask that. But the second one is, man, like how would you describe your childhood? Uh, my childhood was pretty cool, bro. Like my I had both parents in the household, mm. um, so like there was like structure mm. and like order there. Like having my dad in the house, you know what I'm saying, definitely kept me on the right track, mm. and not you know running off into the street life or looking for you know other um, groups to you know fill that void. Mm -hmm. uh, I said it plenty of times, like when I was going through my little tough guy phase, he, <laughs> he uh, you know, put me through like a scourge straight type uh, of ordeal. <laughs> now I was like, no, I'm cool on, you what, know what I'm what, saying? What pops do to you, man? <laughs> man he, he like just bought me around people that was really about that life. <laughs> and I was like, no, He dropped cool you off in the real hood. <laughs> <laughs> he, took, he, took, he took me around them areas. So I was like, no, I'm cool, man. I'm cool on that. But, man, just having him and my mom's in the household, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, any questions and stuff that I needed to ask, you mm -hmm. know, or had questions about with anything, mm -hmm. they was always there to, you know what I'm saying, give me an answer, certain places that I wanted to go or things that I wanted to do. If they knew it wasn't safe, they'd be like, no, nah, you can't go, you can't do this and that. So I didn't have like a, you know what I'm saying, a free range to do anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it at first because a lot of my friends did, Yeah, you know, but now as I got, you know, older, and seeing how everybody's, you know, lives kind of mm -hmm. pan, panned out, you know, I understand why, you know, they didn't let me do certain certain things. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, um, so I you mean, so you was kind of like Trey from Boys in the Hood. Yeah, was, <laughs> that was you. Yeah. Yep. Furious. <laughs> yeah. Pop, Pop was furious. So, um, you know okay. what I'm saying? It's certain things that he was just like, nah, man, you ain't you don't, you don't want to get into that. That's but, what, you know... Uh, it was definitely, you know, it's it's definitely appreciated now. Mm -hmm. The older I get, mm -hmm. and being like a teacher, and you know, what I'm saying, helping mold the young minds of, you know, what I'm saying, the next generation. Yeah, and like they go through certain situations and and, and stuff like that, and kind of just being like a big bro or uncle, like, hey, bro, like you know, find a different route. You right, know what I'm saying so. Right. It's definitely in, important to have, like, you know, uh, positive older male figures, you know what I'm saying, uh, in these young black men's lives. Definitely. For sure, for sure. So, man, how, how did you begin rapping? Uh, I began rapping, I was just always fascinated with how uh, people like Will Smith or... Mm -hmm. Crisscross. I was, you know, I was young, <laughs> like, but I, I was fascinated how, like, you know, rappers put words together mm -hmm. to express how they was, you know, feeling. Mm -hmm. And then once I learned how to, you know, do that my myself, uh, 
that was just something that, you know, I knew that I wanted to do like for the rest of my life. Like, yeah, okay. I I like want to do this forever. Yeah. About um, how old was you? I was about 12. Okay. 12, 12 is when, when I like when, took it serious. When you serious. knew you, you, was, was you just like playing with it or you knew that, all right, this, uh, this is something I wanted to do? When, so like 12 is when I was like, all right, this is something that I wanted to do. Like okay. at, at first I'll be playing like the guys that I grew up with, they were already rapping and stuff like that. I'll just be joking around. Mm -hmm. I'll rap other people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Verses and stuff like that. But then like one day I, I actually spit one of my, you know what I'm saying? Raps and they said, Oh, like that's like really you. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you know, once I got a, you know what I'm saying? The, the nod of approval from like them, mm -hmm. then, you know, that's when I took it serious and started writing every day. And like, um, your how did your first? How you end up doing your first project? So uh, we did our first project. I had a group called Third Star. Mm -hmm. We did our first project at our homeboy Paul Gamble's house. Okay, on like one of the reels though. You know what <laughs> I mean? So like when we messed up, like he had to like rerun the reel <laughs> okay, and, like, okay. and like re-record. Yeah. So like I. I came up in that era where you like you kind of had to like have your raps right. like memorized. Uh -huh. So like uh, yeah, I like did my first tape at twelve, and then we was just selling them around school and uh, and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I've, I've I've been dropping tapes since like twelve years old, so bro. So that's 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 why you you punch in like that, huh? Yeah, <laughs> in and Be out. Because I I've heard you mention you say that you know. Um, like you and a lot of people you came up with was like that was like the golden era of St. Louis hip hop. Like uh, when you was out and a lot of people around. What time you think that was? That was like the the mid twenty tens. Okay, and so why like why did twenty twenty twelve to twenty seventeen ish maybe. Okay. Like that like that like span. That's when everybody just start, you know, coming mm -hmm. out the woodworks. And why why do you say that's the golden golden era of St. Louis? Because because that's when all like the in my opinion, that's when all like the best talent mm -hmm. surfaced. Okay. Like of course Nelly, mm -hmm. Chingy, Huey, rest in peace, mm -hmm. all those guys, they like opened up the door mm -hmm. but people still didn't like see the city as uh they like took it as like bubblegum rap yeah you yeah. know what i'm saying and around that time like once averb and hitman holla and young ill like mm -hmm. just the whole world war street status movement once yeah. they like kind of showed the world that there is some spitters here yeah like Everybody just started coming out the woodworks, you know what I mean? And yeah. I wish that we had, like, um, I wish St. Louis was, like, a bigger entertainment city. Mm -hmm. I really think around that time, like, a lot of people would have, like, got some deals. Yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's wild because that time, man, um, maybe if, we, if, if it wasn't for Battle Rap, you know, it wouldn't even capture that moment, you know, that mm -hmm. we was having, you know, in the city where it was so much fresh new talent that was like spitting. People like you, Tef Poe, Dub, like y'all wasn't, like you said, St. Louis don't really get respected as lyricists, but you guys are true lyricists, you know what I mean? And yeah. I, no, go, no, go no, ahead. no, but I was just gonna say, like, when that, whole battle rap midwest movement battle rap i think that was around the same time they were just battle rapping they wasn't even counting the music that was coming out you yeah. know what i mean <laughs> and you were one of the people who wasn't battle rapping but putting out great music man mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so that was a that was a real moment you know what i mean man we had so many dope artists out like around that time and i I said like what twenty thirteen. I probably take it earlier than than that. Maybe twenty ten. Mm -hmm. Twenty ten, like that, like twenty ten to twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen, like around that like time span. Mm -hmm. That's when like a lot of people was just killing it. And I and I heard you you battled Tef Poe. 
Yep. Yep. Did, you, did did you win? Of course, man. <laughs> of course, I won. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Tell. Shout out, shout out to Tell. Well, he, well, he said you won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's on uh, it's on camera. Like okay. it was a uh, it was a uh, uh, a young a young OGs. No, the rookies versus the OGs mm -hmm. slum fest battle. So okay, it, it like was like a tournament elimination style type. Okay. You know, battle. It okay. was we we had my team. It was me. Riley B, uh, Chris Grimes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who else, man? Oh, Grim Giuliani, Doughboy Dollars. I think that was it. Okay. And then it was Tef, D Mac, Prophet, Grease Gutter, and Vito. Okay. And so we they had like certain. Mm -hmm. uh, challenges to to do like each each round mm -hmm. and then each round like whoever lost you know what i'm saying they get eliminated so it ended up coming down to me and tef uh -huh. at the no no it didn't i think i think i got tef out of there like the third you round got about early yeah, yeah well you know it like was a elimination tight round uh -huh. they would like pick from the they would pick from the uh little uh cup Mm -hmm. And that's who you battle. So like, <laughs> uh, I think I, I think they set that one up though. They kind of wanted me to go at it, but um, you know, t again, it was you, you know what I'm saying like a uh, you know what I'm saying like a freestyle. Yeah, you know man, that was the that was them glory days. Yeah. You know, a battle rap where you just had to, to show up. We you, had to come with it because yeah. that's around the time Tef was. 106 in part. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. He was he was the GOAT yeah. around here. Like he was he was he was the it was king. A, it was a lot of man I remember.